Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to Spaminar. Um, it's our monthly online gathering for live uh, theater prop professionals and anyone interested in stage props. Um, I'm Erin Keller, the Properties Manager at Hartford Stage and a uh, SPAM member. So SPAM is an association of professional prop educators and prop managers from non-for-profit producing organizations with an intentional communication and support network that shares resources, information, solutions, and techniques, as well as safety information, continuing education, and our stocks as well. Um, so we promote the highest professional standards among prop artisans and craftspeople and promote the field of props to potential props professionals while working to establish educational standards for the training of prop artisans. So a little bit about SPAM. SPAM was formed in 1994 to create a fellowship among properties professionals to address issues of common importance and to create parity with other production areas. Uh, we now have over 150 active members reaching from Hawaii to Ireland and Canada to Florida. Um, so as with previous Spaminars, we're requesting a pay what you can donation to help support this programming and our annual grants for early career prop professionals. If you can't afford to donate, the link will be in the chat during the session. Or if you can't afford to donate, the link will be in the chat during the session. And we truly appreciate any help that you can give. So tonight, Mara Rich is here to take us through the mystical world of spreadsheet methods and formulas to offer us some creative solutions to formatting our prop paperwork and share why spreadsheets don't have to be the bane of our existence. Mara is the prop supervisor for Syracuse Stage and the Syracuse uh, University Drama Department, where she also teaches. She fell into props more than a decade ago while working in Arizona Community Theater and later receiving her MFA in props at CCM at the University of Cincinnati. She has worked in a variety of theaters as both an artisan and a manager, including in Chicago, Cincinnati, Arizona, and Virginia. She firmly believes there's no problem so great that it can't be solved with coffee, epoxy, and a spreadsheet, and maybe a little hot glue. I'm your moderator and host for the evening. Uh, if you have questions, please, please, please post them in the chat and then I'll pose them tomorrow during the Q&A following her presentation. And as always, be sure to stay to the end to hear about our upcoming Spaminars and other ways you can interact and learn from our membership. So with that, let's get started. Uh, Mara, are you ready? I am absolutely. All right, take it away. Awesome. Everyone, I just want to thank you for gathering here tonight. I'm so excited. That so many people want to talk about Excel on a Sunday night or spreadsheets in general. Um, trust me, it usually drives people away. So um, as we kind of talked about, paperwork can be kind of a slog. We're artisans, we're craftspeople. We tend to do a lot of building and the paperwork can be a challenge. Um, so I personally, if in another life, would be an accountant. Um, and I have kind of come up with a few tricks and tips that are my personal uh, systems that have been really helpful. Um, and I'm excited to share them. So without further ado, um, one of the big things that I always recommend is how to go into your paperwork. A lot of paperwork tends to start as I need to do something rapid and fast. I'm a big believer in creating templates that you can then draw upon at a later time. So a lot of the stuff I talk about tends to be items that you create before the show, before needing, and slowly collect them because I think there's so much merit in old paperwork and new paperwork and combining and looking to others. Um, so one of the things I always start when I'm talking about any form of prop list or budget is I start asking several key questions. What is the purpose of this document and what am I trying to convey by it? Um, I really think that there is a lot of uh, information that can come from who you're trying to work with and what you're trying to communicate. Um, budgeting paperwork should have clear numbers and shouldn't get lost. Prop tracking paperwork, priority is location. Build plans is to communicate to others. Um, and meeting prep is to give you space and time to collect your thoughts. Um, 
The other really important thing is your audience. And you definitely count as your own audience because if your paperwork drives you bonkers, like it's time to revisit and rebuild. Um, also, you might have your team heavily using it. It might be something as a tool to communicate to your SM team. And so you might wanna take out superfluous information um, or you're sending it to your designer and you want it to be something that you guys can step-by-step step go through to go ahead and make sure that you're not missing anything and that you're all on the same page. Um, and then lastly, I think it's really valuable to not force yourself to be constrained by somebody else's template. Um, obviously, I'm going to show you my ways and I think they are good. Um, but that being said, everybody works a little bit differently and having those unique processes is what makes paperwork, I think, kind of magical, although I might be in the minority. Um, and I don't just mean like breaking up documents or targeted audience. I think there's a lot of merit in tailoring it to yourself, specifically like I have dyslexia. Large spreadsheets can be very overwhelming for me, but I found ways to incorporate color and other systems to help me not get lost in it. Um, so I think that that is kind of the, the joy of discovery and finding them. While it can be a little messy, you can have a lot of uh, unique processes. Um, to kind of just give you an overview of a couple of different prop lists that I have used in the past and also some of my friends have, it can really be what it needs to be. It can be minimal um, with just the prop, the name and the description. You might be a party of one and that's all you need. Um, it can be a little bit heavier detailed, have your thoughts recorded so that you can share it with your team or have it at all your meetings. And really you might be someone who archives um, really well and finds that help you plan. Um, there's a lot of talk about kind of having combined paperwork where it's combined with the prop tracking that the SM team might have so that you can really understand the embodiment. You might also be a prop run crew head um, and this kind of paperwork is a little bit more ideal for you, um, including location and the text and page numbers. Um, you might go for the giant paperwork and break up your props by the type and category that they are. Rather than when they appear in the show, you might target them by furniture, hand props, and build out very large scale documents that encompass your entire concept. And then lastly, you might be many of the other versions. Um, obviously the ones I'm showing are ones that I've used, but everybody has their own unique format. So after, after you hear me, if you're inspired, please go Google other people's stuff. I didn't wanna steal any ones to, to not credit uh, properly. So all of that initial rambling out of the way, um, I would love to show you one of my completed prop workbooks to kind of give you a little bit better idea of the systems that I'm going to talk about and also something to look at that actually moves. Um, so while I am going to talk pretty heavily about my systems, I personally use Excel, big disclaimer, Google Sheets, Numbers, and a lot of other spreadsheet systems work pretty much the same. So a lot of the formulas will be directly applicable. Um, and also a lot of my organization systems can translate to anything, whether it's a paper or a Word document or even just notes. Um, so don't view this as the whole package. They're definitely smaller components that are designed to be built into new structures or tossed out completely because they might seem obnoxious. Without further ado, um, this is my main template that I'm actually currently using now. A big uh, level of credit belongs to Kat Miller at CCM and Cassandra Westover at Chicago Shakes because they both helped me develop this and tolerated all of my playing with formulas. Um, so thank you. Um, this is just one of my more recent iterations. Uh, it is broken into a system of master list. So what I do is I create a master document that has the compendium of all of the props appearing in the show. Um, this list does not repeat and it is not necessarily in order. 
Um, it's like that because I tend to use very heavy referencing systems so that my paper auto populates other documents. Um, and I do this by creating a workbook. So a little bit more specific, this entire Excel sheet is the workbook. I'll create various different uh, pages in it or sheets um, that basically provide me additional information. I base all of them around the master prop list that'll let me then auto-populate those other pieces. So if I run into a situation where it's like, surprise, this show's going on tour, I don't have to then create tour documents. I can click over here and all of my props have auto-populated into a, a pack list that happens to suit my theater. And if you ever um, think that that could be overwhelming, if you right click on the bottom of your sheets, it'll give you hide and unhide. Um, and then you can see the wide array of like different paperwork you can collect and not actually have to deal with. It's there, it's invisible, but it can be with you in the moment's notice. So if I needed, if I had a really consumables heavy show, I could unhide my consumables list and there she is. Um, the other thing that I use pretty heavily in this is conditional formatting. This goes a little bit into my um, particular dyslexia. Um, so what I tend to do is and I'll show you how to do these specifically. Um, this all turned dark. How fascinating. That's the exciting thing about Excel. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, so these are all designed to change color depending on what type of group that we put them in. Um, and this is my budgeting paperwork. If anyone ever wants to talk budget, I swear I won't get this in depth, but, because I've made promises, but this is something that I have a lot of fun with. And I use a lot of um, if formulas to calculate exact data out of types of uh, props, which I think is really fun. We'll see if we get to that. All right, I am starting to ramble. So let me get back on my script. Um, so yeah, I tend to use this kind of document. Um, it has all of my prop types, systems, um, keys in, and then I also tend to color code it. Oh, I know why it is doing that. I made this nicer to look at, but in reality, I made it more obnoxious. There we go. Now it does that. Um, one downside of using a lot of formulas and conditional formats that I'm going to touch upon is that you really have to create rules for your paperwork. Once you start applying those layers, you will basically create constraints that if you go past, um, you might need to do a repair. Um, all of that is kind of a good part of learning and having your paperwork do something weird is actually kind of valuable because it'll help you learn those troubleshooting points. Um, so to give you an example of conditional, the bench got cut, I can strike it through. Um, this is a show prop. Um, I can turn stuff different colors to help convey information. These are tricks that I personally prefer. Awesome. And then to give you a little bit better of an overview, this would then translate into a strike list. If you went ahead and clicked on, you can see that I have referenced a different sheet um, and that will basically copy over. This is some of, one of the things that I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna build out, so I swear I'm not gonna get that confusing. Um, you basically can start with your central sheet, you copy over into this other one, and now you've had that reference, that's what I mean about auto-populating. Um, and then you can type additional information, like removing screens, et cetera. Um, that can go all the way across the board um, 
And that allows me to have multiple different points. So this would be my breakdown of my workers. So then every prop has already appeared there and I can do that. Breaking it into little steps is my preferred method. Um, and it also lets me then calculate um, that this is going to be a three hour process because we only got a Google pick and I'm going to select an artisan and it's going to then add that total to that person through a rough estimate. Um, and then I would keep a total run budget showing what those calculations are. You can go really in depth. I encourage it, but you also don't have to. Um, and then with this calculating, if cut appears from data um, in the master list, then it will calculate it as a secondary. I digress. So how do you actually do the weird things that I was sharing? Um, there it is. Got too many things open. So this is a really rough list that I created. Um, some of this is going to be super basic beginner, but I think one of the things about Excel that can be both really challenging and honestly any spreadsheet program is we do it in such limited times um, with such um, targeted focus that we can miss a lot of basic stuff. One thing that I very recently learned that I absolutely love, and I apologize, I'm on a Mac. Um, if you press option or alt and return, you can make something a second paragraph in a cell. Um, so this is why I am about to go through things a little bit. Um, so we've added our quintessential prop list, created our basic format, and we've got um, our orders. Um, up here, as I'm kind of going through terminology, this is your tab view. Um, and then each tab has a ribbon. The ribbon are all of these different icons and they're divided into groups. One thing about Excel and any other kind of paperwork system, knowing what to Google is like the most challenging and rewarding portion because they give things the weirdest names. Um, so first off, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit more user friendly to view. I personally don't like things all crammed into the corner. Um, and I think I want to give it a header title. So I'm going to go ahead and insert with right click. I'm going to insert twice. So I have a nice viewpoint and I'm also going to insert on the right under column, got our columns and numbers. Um, I think I like doing titles, so I can go up here and I can merge. Some people like to expand and minimize their columns and rows to fit things. I'm a fan of merging. I think it's a little cleaner and it lets you kind of like be a little bit more zoomed in and not have to go into like the mega view. Um, so I press merge and center. That will now combine all of these cells. They can be a little tricky to then reference if you're doing a secondary formula, but for headers, they're golden. Um, so I'm going to go with, obviously, the iconic crop list, the one, the only. Um, and then I can go ahead and go through and make it visually appealing. Um, if I wanted to then copy this style over an extended period, I can go up here to this little paintbrush and it's as if you were copying the um, style rather than the words. And so I can draw it down and I can make things big. That's not something I actually want to do. So I'm not going to do that. It was a mistake. I regret everything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a border. I have a couple of different options. Um, I can do thin, I can do small, it can help delineate. I think one of the really nice things about it is you can give context clues to what important information there is and also highlighting through a lot of these like aesthetic features. It's like set dressing, you're telling a story. Um, 
For this, I can even go in and give it a bright orange border. It'll start off by giving you this little pen that you can click, or you can just uh, escape out and then everything you touch will be that color until you denote it back to the darker one. So let's go back to normal. Um, I'm scared. One of the other real big things with kind of like formatting this into a slightly more readable section is obviously we've got things getting cut off. We've got things overextending. There's a couple different ways that you can solve that in a very fast, efficient way. Um, so you aren't bogged down. Um, you can press uh, select all or command A or Windows equivalent. Um, and you can go up here to wrap. Um, this is basically, I. somebody said, what if all the lines just vanish off into existence and we give them a special button? And this is that special button to fix it. Um, this will wrap your text and make everything auto fit. Um, the other option you had is you can go ahead and select your prop list by pressing shift and select all of you, you start at your top list and you go down to your, your bottom cell that you want to use. And then you will go ahead and put your mouse directly over one of these little sections in between until you get that cross and arrow. And you can double click and it will size it. Um, and it's not letting me do it because I have this, but that is one of the other features that you can auto select. This is where I'm like merging is good, but it can also be rude. Awesome. So we went ahead and created our slightly more readable prop list. Um, next up is I tend to use number systems with my props. I like to do this because I've worked on so many shows where there's like 30 chairs and then I get the note that the chair broke and I'm like, do you go on? Um, so I will usually start with a numbering system. That number is assigned to the prop. And then when it's struck, that number is struck as well. Um, if it's cut, if it's, you know, added to the show, I go ahead and just go all the way to the bottom and add a new number rather than claiming an old. Um, so I'm going to add that system. If I go ahead and add a one here, um, I can painstakingly go through and add those numbers or alternately, um, there's an autofill. Autofill appears when you get this little um, tiny square down here. And it will basically copy the pattern in the selected cell. Um, so if I did one and I was like, great, number, it will give me one. Sometimes even Excel can be passive aggressive. Um, but if I go ahead and start my pattern with one, two, and then I go ahead and draw down it will basically let me, you know, go indefinitely, but it'll show me that it's going through all of the number system. Um, and then I like to make those numbers kind of a distinct color. And my preferred is soft yellow, and I have no idea why. While I'm at it, I'm going to make these bold so that I can kind of notice it. And I'm a fan of Times New Roman, so zoom me. Um, one other thing that I know a lot of people find very visually like distracting um, is all of these other guidelines that are over here on the sides. Um, to make those appear and disappear, you go over to view. And right in here is basically, if you wanted to see the ruler, if you wanted to see the formula bar, um, which is this thing up here. Uh, or if you want to see the guidelines and now they're completely gone and you can create without any difficulty, but they're still here. So by adding down, you can still add them. You just don't have to visually stare at them. They're not in your face. So um, one other thing that I have found to be really nice and like a time saver for a lot of these is something called uh, data validation which is one of the items of like, why would you name that Excel? Why? Um, this is a system that lets you, uh, I don't know. 
This is a system that basically lets you uh, create a drop down menu. Um, so the way that you do that is you select the range of cells that you want to add it in. Um, I want to put it under type now because I'm terrible at spelling. I went ahead and like pre-wrote all of this stuff out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select those cells. I'm going to go over to data on the tab page and I'm going to go to data validation. Um, once you're in here, it's going to give you the option. You've already selected the range of cells that is going to be uh, affected. You go down to list format and then you're going to select your source. This is where you basically create the list on another page or in another location and are able to then reference it. I like to create a separate sheet that has it that I can then hide at a later time, just in case somebody accidentally says, why are these words here? Let me delete them. And then you cry. Um, so in here, these are my furniture type or my prop types. So I've clicked on the sheet. It's giving me that reference. And then I'm going to click on furniture and select shift, draw it all the way down and press OK. Visually, you can tell the difference. Um, but now I've got like this arrow. And when I go ahead and click on it, I can now put this as a type. And it's only going to let me put, um, if I wrote, if I misspelled the word, which is not unheard of, um, it'll then give you an alert. You need to adjust. Um, so this is a nice way of making sure that nothing that affects a formula or a system is out of place. Um, it's a nice edit. And then of course, you might wanna adjust your, your thing to fit your new words. So I've got several systems in here that are a little bit blank. That's because my plan is I wanna reference them from another document. Um, the way I'm going to do that is through referencing formulas. Um, they're super easy to use, but they can specifically create a bit of a hurdle with your paperwork. You just have to plan for them. The way that I normally plan for them is I build my paperwork straight down. I start at the top, I go down, I do not insert new columns once I start, or specifically new rows, not columns, um, because that will cause a hiccup down the line and you'll see. Um, so I've got this lovely prop list, but I have no place to plan my builds. So I can go over to the build plan that I started and visually stunning, I know. Um, I like Times New Roman. I go, I select all, or Baskerville would be nice, yeah. Um, I go ahead and click over here and this is where I'm going to press equals uh, just like as if you do a sum or calculation, go back over to my master list and I'm going to select prop number one, elegant chair. And there it is. Then I can go ahead and drag it down just like I do with the other format. And it will catch the reference and I have now copied my prop list in two motions um, and I can go ahead and keep going. Although. Sorry, chicken with the hat, I skipped you. Um, and you can do this on pretty much anything that you want, whether it's the numbers, because you just don't wanna have to copy that. You might be doing a different numbering system. So this is a good opportunity to be like, oh, my numbers don't go one through a hundred. They go one point blank. So you want it to be keyed to your prop list. This is where, that kind of, I like to reference it if it isn't a guarantee. Um, I have built out my prop list so that it is targeted to my stage management team. I can show this, I can share this, I can show it to the design team, I can print it out. Um, I have gone, oh, I can go over to view and I can select page break. Um, and then if I zoom out, this is page one. <laughs> Why would you do this, Excel? Why? Um, and I can go ahead and basically uh, reduce. So now this blue line is what's going to print. So now it's a really easy format for me to go ahead and share. Uh, and I can zoom back in. 
Uh, and let's let's not have to see that all the time. Let's go back to normal. Um, but that is now saved, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, but this is supposed to be targeted to my my um, and for my own budgeting purposes. So again, I didn't format any of this, so I could repeat myself specifically. Um, this is where I want to add another da uh, data validation of build plan um, method of buying or acquisition. So I'm going to go back over to data data validation any list source. And there we go. Now, let's say I've done this, but I realized that I've missed something. If I go back to data validation and I'm like, find <laughs> the sketchiest of prop acquisitions, um, that is not going to appear into this yet. Really easy trick for adding any data validation that you might want. Um, go ahead. This is where you can insert um, because you're basically taking that rectangle and expanding it. You're adding a secret column. Uh, so in here, I can go ahead and say find and I can delete it over there. And when I go back over to this, now I have find. So I can go ahead and add basically indefinitely. So it's kind of nice to set up those lines and then you can modify it per show when you open up your template. Um, similarly with build plan, um, you could also do the same thing with your artisans of adding in that kind of validation. They can all be validated. It's so it's so wonderful. Um, I won't I won't get too into repeating this, um, but it's a really nice way of kind of sharing information. Now, let's say this is all very good for you because you as the manager have been working through this document. Um, but you want to share what the work list is with your team. Um, but you don't want to have to show them a bunch of different things and be like, oh, but ignore this. And oh, but I haven't gotten there yet. Um, what you can do is apply a filter. Um, filters are really nice because they'll basically sort and condense you can quickly print your page, undo your filter, and you can see all the information. It basically hides things temporarily. I don't recommend typing a lot in while you've, you're under a filter um, because you can miss things, but it's a nice way of really quickly going through. So I can go over here and wrong one. It was, I was there the whole time. Um, I can apply my filter. And then this is going to basically give me these arrows up top. Um, then I select that and I can basically blank things out. I just want to show my artisan anything that has to do for them. And so I have now reduced it to a build list that I can basically print out and give to them. But now I have to make some edits or I want to give it to my carpenter. I have it all back. Um, You'll be able to tell when you have a filter on because the um, filter icon will appear on that column. So if somebody else comes in and you're like, where did the prop list go? This is where, this right here. Um, I tend to do references throughout multiple sheets. So I will reference from here. But since this is the page that my artisan and the carpenter and I'm going to be editing, I might want to then have my um, prop list. There we go. Reference from a different column or a different sheet. So now all of the statuses are up to date. Um, I personally, you can lock these. Um, my most recent update of it has not let me. Um, I have to, to reinstall it in the ways of internet. Um, 
But the way I tend to do it so that everybody can go in and make edits in case there's an emergency or I'm unavailable, because um, nothing is worse than having an Excel document that's not edible, um, is I will actually go and inform people of an area that I don't want them to edit by putting it in red. This is a formula section and I just, my generic rules are don't, don't insert on rows and don't edit the parts of the column. Now, if they tried to, they'd come over here and they'd be like, all right, I wanna add something. And they can see very clearly that the formula is referenced and they can't. Um, so that also helps. Now, as I mentioned, having like that pre-planning and building out everything um, to be more specific uh, or to let it translate to other documents. If I were to insert and add a space here and 5.5 other, and I went over to my build plan, it would not necessarily appear. Um, having those direct translations don't always work. And that's why tailoring your paperwork to fit the tools that you use is really important. Wanted to then add it because I know I did this and I'm not, I have no bones about just pressing equal, going over to um, my new prop and adding it. That's totally fine. Um, it's just something that I have run into in the past, I've tailored my stuff to work around it. And it's just one of the pitfalls you should be aware of with your references so props don't get lost. Um, now, going to talk about some of my favorite things, which are conditionals. Um, conditional formatting is amazing on so many levels. Um, it's really a cool, unique way of basically creating uh, formulas in your document without ever having to actually write out the formula during the editing process. And so what I mean by that is this lovely ribbon right over here of formats. Um, go under conditional. There are a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, this is usually used in like highlighting numbers. So this would make, if you went to, um, oops, greater than, less than, or equal to, um, you can do it as a color range. So this would take your top number and make it green if you wanted, and your lowest number red. Um, if you went to your highlighted greater than, less than, I could say, if my budget line is getting greater than the budget, I can make it red. And everyone's like can run around. Um, I personally, and I, I, can, I can show you that, I have a secret formula that I love that I'm going to share here. And it is an indirect formula um, reference. And you get to it by going all the way to the bottom, manage rules, add, and you go down to classic. This is what, then you go all the way down to formula. They buried it. They didn't think anyone wanted this, it's so cool. Um, and this is, oh, you're going to make me copy it. Okay, hold it, please. This is my preferred formula. Now, what this formula does is it's um, indirect, which means that not the cell that's selected is going to change. Um, then E, or in this case, I actually want to do this on the status, which is I, um, because I like doing them with the statuses. I think it helps kind of like communicate. Um, and then it asks you for the criteria. So in this case, I'm going to write build. Now I have a selected the affected area that I want to have this applied to. I don't want it to turn red. This is a happy thing. We should be excited it's being built. 
Um, so I'm going to go into here under fill. Um, background color should be a light green as it's in process. I'm going to press OK. And OK again. And then you have to approve it one last time. And I wrote building instead of build. <laughs> uh, this is a good sample though. Um, let's say you had that problem and you wrote something different. You can just go back in, edit rule, select spelling, the bane of my existence. And it is now going to go ahead and put that at blue anytime. I love using this with cut because it strikes the prop out gives everybody the view of, I don't have to deal with this, um, but still allows you to um, keep that data available in case it gets added back in. So you don't have to have a thousand versions of your prop list if you don't want. And I think it's fun. Um, if you didn't want to do a complete line because you find that distracting, you can also go into conditional this is where I mean about like a specific cell being blocked by the participants view. Um, you can go to new rule and select um, classic cell that contains a specific text. And this one is going to be not started because that's a dangerous thing. And then that will only select the specific. Um, that's a really good way for budgeting. Last little thing I'm gonna cover, cause I know I've gone over a lot, um, is just a little bit into some of the budgeting stuff that you can add. Um, I personally like to have a budget separate from my build plan. It's just a visual element. Um, that being said, if you wanted to say add cost, This is why I pre-wrote things. Um, and you wanted to copy over your Now you have to read, you have to adjust the, the filter, which is totally fine. You just re-click filter and it'll reselect everything. That's the nice thing about them. They can just be added or will. Um, one thing that I found with budgeting, especially when you are setting up your paperwork, um, is I like to have my budget calculations at the top. I do that because I'm adding at the bottom because I've set up all of this to allow me to continue to add until the million end of Excel because it, it goes to about a million. Um, but it always lets me see the information the moment I click on the page. So I can go ahead and add a bunch of different numbers into these. Obviously they're generic numbers um, to format them a little bit nicer and to also communicate that they're not the new ID numbers. We can go over to this um, home ribbon and click currency. This will go ahead and translate anything. If you're ever having a weird thing where you're like, why is that number like that? Uh, it's because it's because you've got it in like generic or in number. Um, this is the easiest way to kind of put it, or it likes to put itself in date. That's like the worst. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my total um, just to give myself the ID of where I'm going. And then these are my, they're in red because I've got a formula that I'm about to do. Um, same as the other one, equal reference. Go ahead and click on your starting area. And then you can go ahead and scroll all the way down. That um, semicolon is going to be the definition of through. And that's a spill array. This is why I put everything in beforehand. It'll prompt you. So I've typed in sum. I don't need that six.
some command or um, press shift, drag down, parentheses, $9. The nice thing about this is if you go ahead and you click in and you have now added a prop down here that is $7. If only props were this cheap. Um, you can go ahead, click into this, put your icon in the board or in the, in the cell, and it'll show you where the parameters of that formula are. You can go ahead and drag it out. You have now expanded to fit that and you can, you can go. I like to personally set up all of my formulas so that they're going to infinity and beyond. That way, if anyone adds a number, I always have it calculated and I don't have to go back in and check. Um, so yeah, obviously then you can get into a little bit more complicated um, if you wanted to, and I'm just gonna throw it out there because I love this formula as well. It's, it's like an addiction. Um, you can do some if. This is where a criteria has to appear to allow it to have the calculation. Um, so this would be uh, so in this case, let me copy it over so you don't have to have me type. So this is an old calculation, as you can see. Um, in this case, gee, is the criteria. Um, we want, the first one is gonna be the criteria that needs to appear. Uh, in this case, we want it to be, um, under, who's building it. So we're gonna press shift, we're gonna go, and then go back in and edit again. We want it to add, this is where the second set of numbers is. Um, we wanna delete those out. We wanna click this, drag down, press enter. We haven't given it a criteria that actually is relevant to this. Um, i.e. it's this centerpiece is the criteria. Um, I want to do it for my artisan so they know how much we have budgeted on their projects. And you can see now it's only calculating for them specifically or for that criteria. And the really fun part about it is you could do that with anything. You could calculate the totals of what was cut from a show, um, what was added to a show at a late ad, um, past a certain date. Um, the criteria is endless. And you can also add secondary uh, pieces if you get into ifs, not if, but ifs, um, which, can be a little finicky, but are a really cool way when you preset it up. And I will actually usually apply those to my um, uh, my final like run budgets just to have a satisfying way of viewing data at the end of a show and kind of like coming to emotional terms with the closing of a production, just as I'm closing my lecture. <laughs> this is what I've got. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thanks, Mara. That was awesome. <laughs> so we do have a couple of questions from the chat uh, if you want to, to hit those up. Um, so to jump back when you're talking about filters, um, uh, we had a question about is the filter only based on the data validation or are there other ways you can sort of uh, have that filter work? Um, absolutely. Let me go ahead and screen share again because I think that's fun. Um, Let's look at something that has a little more data in it. So we can actually look at my old one. Um, 
which is now hiding behind this one. Um, the really cool thing about the, the filter view is it's it can be applied to anything. It is under the data validation area. Um, well, it's next to it. Oh, I have a thing that I never showed you guys, and I really want to show you. Uh, notice this weird thing that this does. It probably drives everybody nuts. Uh, it is under view. It is something I highly recommend. Um, it lets you freeze what you want to appear. Um, you can go to unfreeze and it scrolls indefinitely. Then you never know what your props are. Um, so I will often go to the column that I want to be that top limit. I press that and now I can always see my headers. Had to say it. Um, so if I went ahead and I applied a filter to this, because I always go to 150, um, I go back under data. This is actually in the filter sort category, not necessarily in data validation. So I can put this with any criteria. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply a filter and I can now do it under character, um, regardless of if I have a data validation. So I don't care about uh, any of those people and they can all vanish. Um, alternately, I can only wanna see Caroline's props or I can wanna just see Anthony's props. Um, and I can go ahead and press, make that go away. And this doesn't have a data validation, so I can go ahead and delete this. That being said, with filters, um, if I deleted it, the filter will not auto update. Um, it will leave that in place until I tell it I don't, I also don't want blanks and then it'll update. So it's why I encourage people to work without the filter running, apply it, see the data, embrace the data, and then move on to uh, basically clearing your filter. Awesome. Hope that answered it. Yeah. So do you ever add any photos of the props or any of the research into your lists? And how does that integrate into to the amazing spreadsheet you've got going here? Um, I do. I do do that sometimes. I've actually found, and this is just like the weirdest personal preference, um, Excel doesn't always hold photos very well, and especially when you start bulking it up. Um, so what I do is I make a PowerPoint because I can compress those photos a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to go back to screen share. Why did I, why did I stop? Just always want to share the screen. Um, so it is really easy to go ahead and say that you want to put, you want to insert something, go to picture, um, Oh God, that's going to show my pictures. Never mind. I reject everything. Um, this can let you just go ahead and put in a picture. Here's a bird skull. It is the weirdest fire alarm ever. Um, and then you basically size it to scale. Um, I have never found this super user friendly. So what I do is, let's pretend this said rehearsal prop. Um, this is traditionally how you can go ahead and apply it. Um, I personally like PowerPoint, and this is something that I uh, have found actually when I was doing portfolio work as well, um, that it will let you, when you're saving, it will allow you to compress files um, based on your targeted uh, send method. So if I were to click this, I just really like paperwork, like in general. Um, so if I were to click on this and uh, crop it, all of that data stays in there, just like if you saved it in your um, spreadsheet. But if you went up here, um, I don't know if you guys can see my file saved. But if you go to file, drag down to compress pictures, it will give you an option of what the quality is. You can compress a 50 page 
picture heavy portfolio into an email format, which is a really nice way of doing a PDF. I like this personally because I can make big pictures for my scenic designers um, and share it with everyone and actually provide like the, the director and the SM like a visual guide, especially in COVID times. Um, I'm not going to say that. Uh, but that's like my own weird, like, why not make more work for myself solution. So speaking of directors and stage managers, um, how does this uh, prop list get updated once rehearsals start? And are you updating it? Is stage management updating it? How is all that working? Um, I find really depending on the team that I'm working with, when I'm working with students at the university, I tend to prefer to have them update it. Um, and we'll use a shared drive, whether that's inputting it into Google, or if we'll put it into a Dropbox folder, um, so we both have access. Um, I like to assign colors so that when they type something, they'll write it in their color. When I've seen it, uh, I turn it back to white. That's actually a trick I got from Cass Westover. So thank you again if you're here. Um, but it's kind of a nice system. If I'm working with professional stage managers, I find that usually it's a recording of my thoughts so that they have it as a reference. Um, and I work a little bit differently, but it kind of goes back to like, who is your targeted audience and what is the optimal way? The less paperwork we have I, between our two departments, personally, I think the better. So if there is a way to get them to use my prop plot as opposed to the list and actually record all of that information, I'm happy to translate to that instead. Awesome, and one more question. Um, what, are there any resources or references that you really recommend and that you use to sort of help learn more about formulas in Excel? And uh, if, we, if we wanna dive deeper than what we can get from you in an hour. Well, um, call me back for a budgeting one. Um, but actually I really love Excel YouTube, like figuring out what that name of the, the tool you want to use Usually if you go to the forums, you're like weird thing end result. Um, they will usually tell you the name, if not the solution. And then Googling that, there are so many different Excel like tutorials that are much more targeted to those specific things. They're not exactly prop oriented, um, but I find that that kind of application can be really helpful. Um, and I also am, have a cheat sheet with all of the formulas I've talked about that I'm going to include in the survey. And it includes my all time favorite YouTubers who like have not the dull, dry, dulcet tones that put you to sleep when it comes to formulas. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Mara. This is really great. It was really cool to see how excited you are about paperwork and spreadsheets. It makes them really exciting and really fun. Can't wait to dig back into some of my own. Um, so yeah, thank you for this great evening, Mara. So. Everybody out there, it is time to grab your Sharpies and mark your calendars for some coming attractions. So on Sunday, April 18th, author, prop master, prop designer, and faculty member at North Carolina School of the Arts and SPAM member Eric Hart will give us props you can make at home, which will show us how to make props using tools and materials, um, and uh, uh, that are commonly found around our homes. Uh, and also provide a preview of his upcoming book, Prop Building for Beginners, 20 Props for Stage and Screen. Um, this Spaminar is also gonna feature our first ever giveaway, uh, where one lucky attendee will walk away with either a copy of one of Eric Hart's books or Sandy Strawn's The Property Director's Handbook. And uh, for this one, you must be present to win. All right, so then on May 16th, all the way from Ireland, uh, we'll have Emer Murphy talking with us about props and the Abbey Theater, uh, which is the National Theater of Ireland, which is pretty cool. Um, Ms. Murphy appears by the kind permission of the Abbey Theater. And then on the 20th of June, Tom Fiocchi of uh, Ohio State University will take us through his build of the puppets from She Kills Monsters uh, in a spam and our we're calling Fighting the Tiamat. Um, so there are more Spaminars currently in development, so stay tuned for updates. So you can find us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. All those links are in the chat. Uh, so Spaminar is produced by the Society of Properties Artists and Managers with special thanks to the Spam Education, Publicity, and Finance Committees. So 
thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please keep your suggestions for future Spaminars coming. We want to know what do you guys want to learn about. So in the words of Jim Guy, president of Spam, now go wash your damn hands, put on your masks, be kind to one another, and prop on. See you guys next time.